Hello. This is Jimmy, and it's Friday morning. We got many things to do today. We got a hospital and do some tests for Velda. And uh, then tonight we begin a new revival series at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in uh, Highlandville, or just west of Highlandville on Highway O. They start at 6 o'clock. Come be with us if you can. I got up early this morning and did my study and ate breakfast and got sleepy and went back to sleep in my chair till 8 o'clock. So, to say I'm well rested, <laughs> which is good. We need We need rest, don't we? Now, uh, we'll begin here uh, in Zechariah chapter 1. We finished that first little section. Well, good morning, Daryl. God bless you. Beginning in verse 7 of chapter 1 of Zechariah. Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month of Sebat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo the prophet, saying, And we have established that this Darius was a second Darius, uh, he, the one who followed Cyrus the Great, because Cyrus is the one who let the people of Israel return to Judah, uh, to Jerusalem specifically to build the temple rebuild the temple under Ezra. Later on came Joshua the high priest, Zerubbabel, the seed of David, the seed roll. Uh, and then came Nehemiah later to rebuild the, the gates, to rebuild the walls. Uh, and they were all working together over a period that spanned about 20 years or more. And then they had a couple of prophets that were uh, that were there for the return, and they were helping out. And uh, Haggai was the prophet of that return, and so was Zechariah. So now, in verse seven, upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month of Sebai, the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. Good morning, Chris. The son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse as he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. And behind him were three, and behind him were their red horses, speckled and white. The speckled are what we might call bays. Like you'd be riding on the bay. Or it's what I would call a bay. Um, this has a direct forecast of the book of Revelation, and it has a history previously in the Old Testament, uh, especially in things prophesied by Daniel, which would have been, you know, 30, 40 years at least before Zechariah, 80 years before Zechariah, so let's kind of take this apart, Zechariah writes, I saw by night, and behold a man, and behold a man. As Johnny Cash sang, there's a man going around taking names. 
and he decides who to free and who to blame. Everybody won't be treated all the same. There'll be a golden ladder falling down when a man comes around. The text will show that this was probably an angel. It'll be a little different. But it's not the first time that an angel had appeared as a man or was described as a man. Joshua saw this. In verse 13 of chapter 5 of Joshua, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, Then he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our enemies? Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him what saith my lord unto his servant and the captain of the lord's host said unto joshua loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place whereon thou standest is holy and joshua did so so this wasn't just an angel appearing as a man this was a what they call a christophany not Chris Christopherson. Whoa, wasn't he a good writer? Good, good entertainer. Um, this is actually the son of God in a pre-Bethlehem appearance. It's happened several times in the Old Testament. This is really Jesus before he was Jesus. You see, he was always the son of God. He wasn't named Jesus until he was born and laid in a manger in Bethlehem from the Virgin Mary. But he was always the son of God. And instead of an angel appearing as a man, this is actually the Lord Jesus. How do we know this? Because Joshua falls down to worship him in verse 14. And in verse 15, This man tells Joshua that he's the captain of the Lord's host. And he says, uh, take off your shoes. He didn't refuse because the ground's holding. It's holding because Jesus is standing on it. And a lot of people say that Jesus presents himself here as the captain of the host. See, Michael, the archangel, is usually described as the captain of the host. But this isn't Michael because Michael or Gabriel or any angel will not, any holy angel, will not allow himself to be worshipped. Of course, the fallen angels want to be worshipped. They're behind all the devils in the world. The fallen angels and Satan himself, they're the demons, the devils, Satan, the devil, they're behind all the gods of this world. They're Allah. They're they're, uh, all the Hindu gods. They're Buddha. They're every god except Christ. That's who they are. But this being, this man who was captain of the host, would not accept worship. So... That was the Lord Jesus in that case. And he is the captain of the Lord's host because he will return in glory in chapter 19, Revelation, beginning in verse 11. He leads the armies and all the hosts of heaven to the earth to defeat the armies of the Antichrist at the battle of Armageddon. It's going to happen one day. And Daniel... 
Um, there's something to be mindful of. Um, chapter 7. And he asked himself yet again, is it chapter 7? Oh, we wait with bated breath. Uh, except it's not, it's in chapter 9. Now here's where an angel is described as a man, and we even know the angel's name. Verse 20 of Daniel chapter 9. And whilst I was praying, Daniel wrote, and whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the, this vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touch me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and told me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Gabriel. There are four angels that are named in the Bible. We know their names. Two are holy angels. Two are fallen angels, wicked angels who rebelled against God under their leader Satan and fought a battle and are still fighting a war with the angels of heaven. The heavenly angels that are named there is Michael and Gabriel. And this Gabriel here, who Daniel describes as a man, <laughs> but he said that he flew in. <laughs> see, if we could look into that other dimension, we would see angels flying because they have wings. I don't know. They can appear as men. They can take on human form. Michael seems to have mostly to do with Israel. He's called the prince and the great prince of Israel. Gabriel seems to have a lot to do with the church because it's Gabriel who appears to Zechariah and tells him that his wife Elizabeth is going to bear John the Baptist. It is Gabriel who appears to a young virgin in Nazareth, Mary. And tells her that she's going to be the father of the, be the mother of the Messiah, whose father will be God the Holy Ghost. Amazing things these angels do. The the two named fallen angels, of course, are Satan, the devil, that old dragon, um, and also one that's being held in a pit right now. Peter calls the Tartaru. It's commonly known as the abyss, the bottomless pit, where certain angels are reserved under chains of darkness until the days of judgment. But he's let out during the book of Revelation to go commit mischief upon the earth. And uh, his name is Abaddon in the Hebrew. And in the Greek, Apollyon. Those are the named angels. But uh, they can appear as men. Paul said that, uh, that Satan disguises himself as a as a light bearer, as a person who is full of light. It's a 
It is a mimicry of the light of Christ. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Satan's angels can appear as ministers of light. And those angels can cause lost men and women to become apostles of darkness by pretending to be the light, but the only light they have is this false light that Satan gives them. But that these angels appear as men is indisputable. Abraham saw the the three men coming in the cool of the day. One of them was the Lord. The other two were obviously angels. They were the angels that went on to Sodom to remove Lot and his house before the great destruction of the Sodomites. And all of the cities of the plains. So he was a man. He said, I saw by night and behold a man. I saw him as a man riding upon a red horse as he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom and behind him were the red horses speckled in white. Good morning, Kevin. This is a direct, of course. Now, I told you in the introduction several days ago that Zechariah is an Old Testament prophecy. It has some near meanings. It has some near fulfillments, but it is mostly fulfilled in the time of the end, as specifically during the Great Tribulation. Zechariah, good morning, Steve. God bless you, my old friend. Zechariah is not parallel to the book of Revelation. As a matter of fact, it was written at least 500 years before Revelation, being the next to last book in the Old Testament. But it gives details that you don't have in Revelation while describing the same events, especially as they follow along the three sets of seven judgments. The one we're going to talk about right here is the seal judgments in Revelation. Remember, nobody was worthy to open the seals. And then they found out that the, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth, worthy is the lamb to open the seals. And the first the four seals that Jesus opens in John's vision in heaven. Roughly 500 years after Zechariah writes, because he was writing around 420, 440 B.C. It gives details to those things. And the first four of those seals were what people commonly call the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I'm not going to go into a deep study of Revelation because, as you know, I'm preaching Revelation mainly on Sundays and, and when I preach out. And I don't like to do a Bible study on the same things that I'm preaching about because I get confused. I only have two ribbon markers, so I can only mark, I can only mark two things at a time. Of course, if you have a fancy Bible like mine, you have two ribbon markers. Or like in Jungle Book with King Louis, he says, have two banana, <clears throat> right? <laughs> This is something we've talked about before, but not in depth. Just a refresher of the verses in chapter 6 of Revelation. 
quickly just for way of background because this will this will come into play remember in Zechariah we have details for events that we don't understand until 500 years later and John the apostle writes the revelation of Jesus Christ <laughs> so <laughs> all, all the all the other gospel writers they have a chapter on prophecy John decided to write his book about who Jesus is and then he writes a whole book of prophecy by itself anyway he was he was able to open these four seals the lamb was and uh Oh, I love to see this. Verse uh, chapter five. And I saw in his, the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Now these seven seals that, that John is writing about right here in chapter five of Revelation. These are some of the things that we see in the early chapters of Zechariah. Zechariah. And these are the events that Zechariah is giving details for and so that's why it's a little bit necessary that we follow the thread and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof and no man in heaven nor in the earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon and one of the elders, you notice it's not one of the angels. It's one of the elders. This is the church in heaven, my friend, after the rapture. One of the elders says unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Gee, I wonder who that could be. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book. And to loose the seven seals thereof. Verse six. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Good morning, Mr. Rosie, my old friend Vince. I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, Four beasts are on the four corners of the throne of God. There, in my estimation, another race of angels. I see three different races of angels or types of angels in this creation. Good morning, Gala. God bless you, sister. Uh, these four beasts. There's the, the seraphim and the cherubim, and then these four beasts, and those are the three types of, of, uh, of angels that God seems to create. But these four beasts are special. You only see them at the throne of God. Good morning, Trent. I hope all is well at Wheelerville. I think I will be with you in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to it. Very forward to it. That, that Friday night we're with you. That's going to be your singing Friday night, ain't it? <laughs> That'd be all right. That'd be all right. These four beasts are always guarding the throne of God. There's one on each corner. And this lamb is in the midst of that throne. This lamb that looks like it had been slain. It's the Lord Jesus. Where is Jesus right now? He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he says in Revelation 3, he says, He who overcometh, he says, I'll allow him to sit with me <laughs> in my throne as I am now seated in my Father's throne, just like I'm with the Father. When I set up my kingdom on earth, you're going to be in my throne with me. Now that gets me excited. When I'm on top of that, I'm a short man. I expect to be taller in heaven. That may not be true. My glorified body, I hope, is taller 
I know it won't be sick like my body now, but it might be taller. But even if it didn't taller, I'm going to be up on that throne with Jesus. I'll be able to see everything. It'll be like somebody holding me on their shoulders. Lo, I beheld in the midst of the throne and the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as if it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits that go out forth into all the earth. And well, this is the, the lamb, Jesus, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. He is the one that opens the seals. And the first four are what we call, you know, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Let's just talk about the red horse because uh, that's uh, first uh, that's second. We skip the we skip the white horse. He doesn't talk about the white horse here, but he does talk about the red horse. And the first horse is the white horse. And I saw the verse chapter six of Revelation. I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, "Come and see." And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Remember, he goes forth conquering with peace. He's got a bow like a great warrior, but he doesn't have any arrows. He's not shooting anything except BS. <laughs> He's shooting that all right. He's going to take the world by flattery at first. And then the conquest comes later. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Then the second seal... It says, and when he had opened the second seal, verse 3, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So the first, the first horse is false religion. A false Christ, and then comes war. Back to Zechariah chapter 1. And I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. This man has the sense of being from heaven. Now, let's go back to the first phrase I saw by night. Is Zechariah having a vision? Is he having a trance? Is he having a dream? Unless the stars were out, how could he tell the color of these horses? It's at night. How could he tell the details that he's seeing in the dark? Even a full moon and a clear night. It would be rare for you to tell the precise colors and actions of these people, of this man and these horses. Especially if they're in the trees. Remember, they're in the myrtle trees. I had an aunt named Myrtle. We called her Aunt Mert. She was my grandfather's sister. There was Mert and Ruby, and Julia, and Wilhelmina, and they called her Bill. She married a guy named Bill Duckett. They were Bill and Bill Duckett. I had an Aunt Bill and Uncle Bill. I was very confused. But Aunt, Mer Aunt Myrtle, every time I see that word in the Bible, the Myrtle trees, I think about Aunt Mert. She might have been married to somebody named McDonald, but I just can't remember. I have enough trouble keeping my own uh, immediate <laughs> history going and to remember all that stuff. I apologize for spending so much time on that Myrtle Trees. Every time I look down, I remember Aunt Mert. I think about my grandpa and I think about the way it used to be. I think about it a lot more now. And I realize that nothing ain't like it used to be. It's just, uh, 
makes me sad sometimes, you know, but it doesn't change my job. My job is to state the claims of Christ. My only job is to preach the cross and teach the Bible and let the chips fall where they may. And if I get sad over the things that used to be that aren't anymore, I can get happy about the things that are going to be that I've never known. And they're going to be better than the things that I miss. Better than the people I miss, than the friendships I miss, than the, quote, good old times and good old days. Those good new days are going to be something special because they're going to be of the Lord, by the Lord, and with the Lord. I saw by night, so let's, let's say he was having a vision or a dream, because in the night amongst the trees, even on a clear, cloudless night with a full moon, he would not have been able to tell the colors in the dark. Yes, I realized that I deduced some things, but God gave me a brain as pitiful <laughs> and ill-equipped as it is, as, <laughs> as scrawny an instrument <laughs> as my brain is, what sometimes we must deduce, but we can never be dogmatic in our deduction. And we can be dogmatic in the main and plain, but we can't be dogmatic about something that's not absolutely clear. So was he in a trance? Was he having a dream? Was he seeing a vision? I don't know. I do know that it was a supernatural visitation and God was causing him to see these things. And I don't believe they were actually out in a field under a myrtle tree. And I saw by night and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. That to me, that means the river bottom. I think that's what it was. And behind him were there red horses. Again, red horses and speckled and white. And the way it's described in the Bible dictionary is what it was what I would call a bay. You know. Um and white horses. Now, I just, I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit on these red horses. Just a, a little bit, just to do some clarification, because we're going to talk some more about the horses. And we will get to this. We will talk more about this when we get there. And it also explains why I believe that he's in visions and not seeing things that are actually happening in front of him. Zechariah chapter 6, we're just going to skip ahead for clarification. We will study this in detail when we get there. Verse 2, well, let's we'll go ahead and verse 1, chapter 6. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass, In the first chariot were red horses, and the second black horses, and the third white horses, and then the fourth grizzled and bay horses. They were grizzled and strong bay horses. And this coincides to me with Revelation. We've got all the colors there out of order, but there are more details. Red horses, black horses. <laughs> White horses and grizzled, strong bay horses. That could be construed as a grizzled, starved. It could be 
they could be the, t the place of the pale horse. See, the Lord in Revelation is the white horse, the red horse of war, the black horse of uh, famine and, uh, and, and pestilence. And, and the the what the grizzled horse or pale horse, the horse that stands for pestilence, death, disease, death. So these are all the horses that are described in the book of Revelation, beginning in chapter six, and the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And then I said, O oh my Lord, what are these? And he's asking this angel. He saw a man in verse 8. Now he's talking to an angel. Are they the same? being i think so i think that the bible is defining that this man was an angel that appeared as a man then i said oh my lord what are these and the angel that spoke with me that talked with me said unto me i will show you what these be the man and the angel i believe are the same or the same type. Maybe he sees an angel as a man. Maybe he's talking to an angel as an angel. Maybe he's talking to a man who is an angel. Hebrews said that that uh, that we talk to angels all the time. Don't even know it. Let brotherly love continue. Chapter thirteen, verse one the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. Hebrews 13, verse 1, let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Did this go on during Bible times? Yes, it did. Does it go on now? Yes, it does. I have so many stories that other people have told me and incidents in my own life where the only <laughs> possible explanation for the events described was the intervention of an angel. They are ministering spirits to us. That's what Peter said. They minister us. That means they help us. Well, I can't find the verse that I want. But that's okay. You know me. I'll find it tomorrow. But it says that the angels are ministering spirits to us because they are interested in the things of salvation. They're curious about things of salvation. So they are always helping the redeemed. They are helping us and protecting us. And fighting for us. If you could see into this other dimension that I talk about, you would see angels fighting each other. You would see the holy angels protecting us and the armies of Satan going against them and fighting them and God's army holding them off. That is going on all the time. It goes on in the Bible. It's going on right now. I've read to you many times from chapter 9 of Daniel, and you know the story 
Daniel prays for 21 days and the angel, the man Gabriel finally shows up, the angel. He says, Daniel, man, I'd have been here, you know, God sent me to help you the day you started praying. But Satan's armies and the, the prince of Persia, the, the angelic being that was in charge of Babylon at that time, he kept me from coming to you. But I finally got here. But I started coming your way the moment you started praying. Angels are there to help us and they're there to fight for us. Don't ever doubt it. And it's not some kind of myth like your guardian angel or your special angel or anything like it. Although I think that there's some truth to that. Because Matthew 18 says that, that God, the angels are watching over, listening, watching everything that anybody does to the little ones. Now, nah, the whole army of angels would come and help us if they had to. And so I said, oh, my Lord, what are these things? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. The angel's going to explain it to me. Just like <clears throat> the angel Gabriel explained to Daniel the things that he was seeing in his visions. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, See, I think they're two different people, but I think they're both angels, one appearing as an angel and one as a man. But again, I still believe this is all a vision or Daniel's uh, or that, that, that Zechariah has been taken someplace to be shown this, this uh, panorama of events. He did the same thing with Ezekiel. He, he did the same thing with John the Apostle. So that's possible too. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they who the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. Why are there horses walking around to and fro in the earth? Well, God sent them to do it. And the horses seem to answer the angel that was in the myrtle trees. <laughs> I don't think that he was smoking marijuana. I think the Lord is showing him something or he wouldn't have written it down. Verse 11, and they answered, who answered? The horses that were in the myrtle trees. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth. And behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. Good morning, Amy. Now we'll have to get into this tomorrow as to why the earth was at rest. And why it has an application in the future. I will give you a preview. The immediate meaning of the prophecy is this, so that Zechariah can go to the people of Judah and they're trying to get them to rebuild the temple, hurry it up and get it built. And one of the reasons they want to hurry is that there's peace all around them. Everything is still around them at this point. Nobody's trying to stop them. Nobody's trying to kill them. Uh, nobody's trying to tear down what they build. Zechariah 
part of Zechariah's message to the the people that returned from Babylon. It's so let's let's finish. Let's get this temple built. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. Let's finish it while all is at rest around us. While all is still. While all is quiet. While we have a chance to do it. Jesus said. So the earth set it still and all is at rest. Jesus said, we must work while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can work. You see, you got to get it done when you're able to get it done. And that's going to be the immediate message of this vision. You see, God has sent spirits beings, angelic beings and spirits throughout the world plus the ministry of God the Holy Ghost and they've looked at everything and they say everything's quiet, all's clear nobody's trying to stop you you need to get the work done now there's a time coming beloved when the forces of Satan will try to destroy us the devil cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And he wants to do it to us. We have the liberty to do our work right now. There will come a time when we will no longer have that freedom to do that. I'm not being negative. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. There will come a time when he that killeth us will think that he doeth God's service. He's doing the will of God by slaying us. And we'll be killed. As the prophet Isaiah said, as Paul quoted, For thy sake we are slaughtered all the day long. So we have to do the work now. While there is time. While it is yet day. Amy, thank you so much. I was looking in chapter 13 for that verse when I should have been looking for verse 13. You know how bad I am with numbers. My darling good sister from, from the Wheelerville Community Church, bride to the very lucky husband and fortunate man who, on whom God has smiled upon, yes, Brother Trent, how blessed you are to have such a good wife. She found the verse. I was looking at chapter 13. She sent me to verse 13 in chapter 1. This was the verse I was looking for a while ago. Thank you, Amy, about those angels. It says, in verse 13 of chapter 1 of Hebrews, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Remember, he was made a little a little lower than the angels. But he is Christ the King. And then it says, Are they not all ministering spirits, these angels? They're here to help us. They're here to talk to us. They're here to show us things. They don't. Most of the time, they don't stand there and talk to us. But if they were, we wouldn't know. They just look like people unless they revealed themselves to us for some reason reason known only to God. And they, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for who? <laughs> for them who shall be the heirs of salvation. That's me. If you believe in Jesus, you're an elder, heir to salvation. Oh, but I'm already saved. Well, sure you are. I was saved. I am being saved and I will be saved. See, my final salvation, my final redemption, my final glory comes from my glorification and having my glorified body like the body that Jesus walked out of the tomb in. And that body will live forever. Thank you, Amy, for those verses. I could remember the phrases, but I couldn't find it to save my life. That's why I like doing a Facebook live stream instead of just putting it out on YouTube or something because you can talk to it. You can talk to me while while I'm doing this, and you can help me. As the old man gets more feeble, he needs more help. <laughs>
God bless all y'all. We got to get ready to go to the doctor. Uh, we'll be back in the morning. Come see us uh, November 1st through 3rd at Wheelerville Community Church. Come see us tonight through Sunday night at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, just west of Highlandville on Highway O. It sits on Torrey Creek by the Trout Farm. And uh, if you're from around here, you may call the church Torrey. God bless all of you. The Lord be with you.